Recently, a friend on Facebook has uh, upped his game with a nice new ED refractor. Uh, Skywatcher 72 ED. And he banged out this image of M42, the Great Orion Nebula. It's a two-hour exposure, and I think that looks fantastic. It speaks volumes for the 72 ED. But in his post, he's stated... He knows the core is blown out, he's just going to have to find the right balance to see that doesn't happen. And unfortunately, I don't think there is a balance. But there are some tricks we can utilise to get a more balanced image throughout. And that's what this video is going to address, using nothing but free software. I'm Nugsy, this is Cheap Astro. For those of you that know my channel, don't be worrying. This is not a change of direction for me, this is an addition. I did state that I wasn't into doing tutorials in my channel intro video, and that there are others more suited to the job. Isn't that right, Nico? I agree with you. But sometimes there's a need. Sometimes there's just not a video there, or it's hard to find. And I'm happy to fill in those gaps if I can. The trouble with imaging M42 is getting a kind of consistent brightness throughout. Now we can see in this image that the core is what we call blown out. That is where we've reached maximum brightness. And each pixel in that core is at 100% white. And that continues, this spreads out the more exposure you put into it. There are stars in that core, and many images on a Google search will show details within that core. So how do we do that? It's not a case of um, just dropping your exposure times or ISO or gain settings, because if you do that, you lose out on all this faint nebulosity around the outside as well. So if you only bring it up to where you can see the core, you don't see the outside. If you do bring it up to see the outer nebulosity, then the core is blown. So the only way around it, really, is to do both. Right, so the idea behind doing this is quite simple. You have one set of subs that you would normally do, which will blow out the core, because you wanted to get all that nebulosity out and a second set of subs preferably taken on exactly the same night as part of the same session but you can go off and take other subs just try and get your rotation spot on with it so um, I'm not going to go through the processing in this I have already processed these I know there's lots of different folders here but I'm just going to use this uh, which was some um, three minute exposures and this and combine those and you'll see what I mean in a minute um, but to actually come up with the results and I'll show you I've already got these results here I used this guy's tutorials for using Cyril and this is it's the best place I found for learning Cyril uh, look, he's got these videos will take you absolutely from scratch including like making sure that Starnet++ is working on all the rest so he goes through a lot and you can just follow along and it works a treat it really does uh, all the different bits and pieces within Cyril he'll walk you through it and he's done this one as well this is um, explaining that he has himself made some scripts for Cyril that allows you to use it without darks or biases or flats because Cyril will usually insist on all of them I'll show you this one in a minute as well 
the free alternative to Blur Exterminator. That Blur Exterminator is a, f a plug-in for the expensive PixInsight. But using free software is the, uh, the way I roll. And that is a good free tool, a free AI tool, to sharpen your images. So, yes, Deep Space Astro, everyone. Now, so I'm in the ISO 400 um, folder, and this is the result I've come up with after StarNet has removed all the stars. And you can see there's hardly anything to it. There's also an artifact down here. But this is what we're looking for, a core that hasn't actually blown out. Let's just centre that again. Now, also, I'm going to load into GIMP one of the other results. I said this one, didn't I? I better give it the same zoom. And then we can flick back and forth and see the differences there. So yes, we have blown out the core here. And we want to get rid of some of that white and replace it with the lesser data in the other. Now, if you look carefully, you'll see as I flick back and forth between these two, they're very slightly out of sync, out of place. Zoom out again, and I just want to point out that if I was to just, well, I'll, I'll do it now. I'll copy this. That's a, just a right click, edit, copy. And then I'm going to paste it as a new layer. Okay, that's easier to now flick back and forth between. And we can see this one is up and to the right a little of the other. If your rotation is off, that makes it more difficult. But there is a rotate tool in here. I don't have to, luckily. Um, if I was just to move this layer to match up with the other, the borders of the layer would be outside of this box and that creates another problem for us especially as we have to then do star recomposition so what I'm gonna do instead of pasting this whole image over as a new layer here I'm going to actually sorry delete that layer I'm gonna go back here and what we've got to remember is only this little bit that we need. So I'm just going to draw a box like that. Copy that. And paste that as the new layer. And it's even more out of centre now. It's been centred in the image. So, now that's pasted in there, we're going to have to move this layer to the point where it is exactly right. But we can't see through it. So, what we need to do, as long as this is the highlighted layer, and turn the opacity down on it. And look, there we go. Let's zoom in on that. I'm just shift and scrolling the mouse wheel we can see both of these stars here and the little blue halo edge and I've just got to line them up together just double checking treble checking and that does look right to me so now, turn the opacity back up, and I can put that pasted layer underneath the starless result. 
Now we know it's there. And that looks spot on for positioning. Okay, so highlight the first layer, the top layer. What we need to do now with this top layer is create a layer mask by right clicking on it and add layer mask. You don't need to mess with any of this, just add and it comes up then with this layer mask which is just a white panel and to like erase that mask to be able to see through this we're gonna have to paint black onto it so make sure you're in black zero zero zeros all the way and take your softest paintbrush that is the circle that's faded out from the center the largest fade So we've got that, and that is a bit on the big side there. I'm going to turn it down. Remember, it's only the center that it actually paints black, and it's all faded out from there. But I'm still going to go a little smaller. Not a lot smaller. That should do us. Let's zoom in so we can see better what we're doing. And I've also made sure... That the opacity is down and I tend to go somewhere around 20% remember there's always an undo button if you mess this up so what we're doing is eating away at this white to reveal just click 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 what's underneath I know we've got blue halos here with no stars, but the stars are to be added in at a later point in Cyril. Oh, I think I've cut through the bit of pink there, so I'm going to undo that one. I'd say I'd be fairly happy with that. It's a very quick demo of what we're doing, but you can spend as much or as little time as you like on it. That has removed the core. But we can't just save it as it is. So, if you're happy with the result there, what we need to do first of all is merge this back into one layer. And that is up here. Image merge visible layers merge now it's one layer again we can go file and just overwrite the starless result that you started with close out GIMP and we are in the right one so starless result there so we're gonna now merge that back in with that in Cyril's star recomposition however beforehand I did say I was going to show you one other thing and that is Astro Sharp from the um, video I pointed out in Deep Space Astro so it's just an executable it's not a, an installed program and it sometimes works and it sometimes doesn't when you click on it. And it didn't work. It's just loaded up white. Usually second time works. There we have it. I always like to drag it up to the top so it's full stretch. And to sharpen this I'm just going to literally drag it in there and it'll just go by itself this is an AI sharpening tool as we scroll down it says sharpening pixels this will take some time and they do mean it it'll take a little while okay here we go They've given us a preview that's so small we can't see it. So let's just download the sharpened file. 
and we'll put it in here right I now have both of these images loaded into GIMP and zoomed in possibly a bit too much and we can see this is the one we worked on and this is the sharpened version normal sharpened normal sharpened I tried this on another image that had lots of walking noise and it also sharpens the walking noise so you need to have fairly good data for that tool but I think it's done a fairly good job of bringing out some detail in here so yeah I'm going to use that so we're going to blend the sharpened result back in with the star mask result back in Cyril but we can't do it with TIFF files let's pick the correct parent folder so as not to confuse issues further so we want the sharpened.tiff that's the one that we just worked on and I'm going to save that as a sharpened dot fit and it's got to be 32 bit floating point save now we'll open the sharp at uh, the star mask um, in fact let's have a look at the star mask fit I don't think it's any different yeah we're gonna carry on with that so we're happy with that star mask fit and we've got the other one just turned into a fit so now we go into star processing star recomposition and we'll sorry before I do that this is background this is star so we've got to choose the background first of all and we're choosing the sharpened dot fit that we just created same thing for the star mask dot fit and there we have it okay if you've not used this before you can further stretch and that little stretch I can get away with that's nice you can diminish your stars with the black point or bring them up with stretch factor it's up to you what you want to what you uh, fancy I'm gonna leave the stars as they are I'm gonna basically leave that as it is and just apply on both close and that there is an image all done ready to save so I'm just going to save it as a JPEG here. Result. We've taken a blown out, blown out core and brought it back to a sensible level. Didn't take that much, did it? No. Thank you for watching. I know it was a step out of the ordinary for me, but do let me know if you want me to do any more tutorials. I'm, I'm down to do them if you're interested. Thank you for watching. Clear skies all. This is Nugsy and Cheap Astro. Out of here.